In this video, I want to talk about the difference between what we call state and non-state functions. The easiest way to understand this is really to use an analogy. You should think about hiking up on top of a mountain starting from the bottom of the mountain. Okay. Now, as you can imagine, there are many ways to get to the top of the mountain. So, if you're somebody who likes to find the shortest path possible, you might go with this direct route that goes directly from the bottom to the top of the mountain and it takes five miles to get there. If you're somebody who likes to sort of look at the scenery as you go up, you might take a scenic route and it takes 12 miles to get to the top of the mountain. As we look at this example, there are a couple of different parameters we can look at. One parameter does not change whether you take one path or the other path and another parameter changes its value as you take one path versus the other path. If you think about altitude of the person who's traveling from the bottom to the top of the mountain, you notice that whether the person takes the straight forward path or the scenic route, the altitude change would be exactly 10,000 feet regardless of which path that the person takes. However, if I measure the distance traveled by the person, you can see that the person who takes the straight forward route would travel a much shorter distance compared to the person who takes the scenic route. So as you can see that there's two different parameters we can measure. One parameter depends on the path we take to go from the initial to the final state. Another parameter does not depend on the path it takes to get from the initial to the final state. In thermodynamics, we also have similar types of parameters. So there are functions in thermodynamics or properties that will change when we take a different path and there are functions whose values will not change when we take different paths. So these are defined as state and non-state functions. So a state function is a function whose value can be described by its current state. In other words, if you change a path and you go from the same initial state to the same final state but you take different paths to get there, the change in the state function will be exactly the same for those two different paths. Whereas for a non-state function, it is path dependent, meaning that the change in a non-state function will depend on which path you take. So for example, a state function is internal energy. So the change in internal energy for a reaction will not depend on the path it takes for the reactants to get to product. So for example, for the same reaction, there might be two different paths to go from the reactant to product. It might take in one path 10 steps for the molecules of the reactants to convert to the product. In another path, the molecules might only take three steps to convert from reactant to product. In both cases, the value of the delta E or the change in internal energy would be exactly identical. A non-state function, on the other hand, would be like heat and work. These two values, for the examples I just mentioned, would change depending on the path that the reaction takes. Let's use an analogy again here to explain the difference between delta E, Q, and W. As I just said, Q and W are path-dependent functions or non-state functions. However, delta E is a path independent function or a state function. Set up the situation for you. In this case, you want to hit this purple ball using the cue ball with a certain amount of energy. So let's say you want to transfer five joules of energy into the purple ball. Now, in an ideal world where there's no friction on this table, you're going to hit five joules of energy into the cue ball and exactly five joules of energy would be transferred into the purple ball. However, we're not in an ideal world, so there's always some amount of friction occurring. So let's say we have two types of tables that we're playing on. One type of table is a smooth table where there's very little friction. So let's say in that case, as you hit the white ball and it transfers its energy to the purple ball, only a little bit of energy is lost due to friction. Let's call it half a joule lost to friction. The other 4.5 is then transferred to the purple ball. And then let's imagine a different situation where you're playing on a rough table or an older table where there's a lot of friction occurring. So when you hit the white table across and transfers the energy to a purple ball, 
only two joules of energy is transferred to the purple ball because three joules of energy is lost due to friction. How are these quantities related to delta E, Q, and W? Well, let's think about it. Delta E is actually the energy that is lost by the Q ball as it starts from this position and ends at that position. Notice that in all these examples, the amount of energy lost by the Q ball by the time it stops moving is always 5 joules, whether you start with the smooth surface or the rough surface. So delta E doesn't change regardless of the path that you take. However, what changes is the Q and the W. Well, which one is the W? The W is the amount of energy that the Q ball uses to hit the purple ball. Because remember, work is force times distance. So the work that is done by the cue ball on the purple ball is the amount of energy that the cue ball uses to move the purple ball. And that value changes when you're using the smooth surface. The value of work is 4.5 joules, whereas when you're using the rough surface, the value of W is only 2 joules. And then what is heat? Well, heat is friction because when the cue ball moves around, uh, from one position to another, some of that energy is lost due to rubbing against the surface of the table. That rubbing really doesn't move any of the particles, so there's no work done there, but there is slight temperature changes on the surface of that table as the cue ball moves, and that is what we call transfer of energy through heat. So on the smooth surface, the transfer of energy through heat is a smaller amount, half a joule, but then the rough surface, strand for some energy is higher, it's three joules. Now what you can see in both cases is that both Q and W change its value depending on the path that it takes, so they are non-state functions. You might ask why does it matter that we know whether something is a state or a non-state function? Well, as you can see, a state function requires very few parameters to measure or very few conditions to measure for us to be able to calculate it. So for example, for delta E, the only numbers we need are what the initial value of the E is and then the final value of the E. We really don't need to know what's going on in between to calculate the value of delta E. However, if we want to calculate Q and W, we need to know the details of exactly what's going on when the reactants start as it goes and converts it themselves to the product. So knowing that something is a state function makes it easier for us to measure the change in the value of that function compared to something that is a non-state function.